We are live. Welcome back, familia, to another episode of The Chosen. This time we're ex we are going to experience episode three and four of season two. And that brings us closer and closer to season three, which we are excited to see in theaters this Friday. It's going to be everywhere. If you don't have your tickets, you can purchase them in the link down below. Um, <clears throat> I would love it if you join us. We're not all going to see it in the same theater, but we are going to see it together, but separately, separately together, if that makes any sense. And I'm excited about that because from the from the time that I've that I've known, the last time that I remember like a big film like this being on 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 the big platform was The Passion of Christ. And I remember almost every shot of that was just wild, just impactful, like it was just God, I want to say that a lot of it was just blood, <laughs> you know. So that story has been told, but I don't know of any other story of any other film or show that's telling the story of Jesus in the way that this is being told. So please purchase your tickets. Purchase your tickets. Uh, go see it on in theaters everywhere. We're gonna give it a few seconds here before we get started, so we can get pe more people on on here. Um, and then let me. I have to restart. I have to restart it here. I'm gonna go back. Oh, never mind. Wait, where am I going? I gotta go back here a little bit. Boom, right there. Okay. I'll get started in just a second. Esther says she got her tickets. I know a lot of you have gotten your tickets. We're excited about exploring more of this of this show. We're excited about getting it into a bigger platform and excited to see how far this story will go and how far it will reach um, more people around the world. Like it's reached me, like I know that it's reached a lot of you. All right, so it looks like we have 33 people on here. <laughs> That's a great number. So we will get started now. You ready? Show me some hearts in the live chat, familia, and then we'll get started. Oh no, we dropped one, so it's 32 now. Well, 33 with me included. So, <laughs> all right. Oh, sorry. I crack my knuckles every every once in a while. So don't, don't be rooted out by that, okay? And my neck. You'll hear me cracking my neck <laughs> often. All right. It looks like we have everything in order. I have my volume set. Is my voice too loud? Is it good? Just watched season two, episode one tonight. A oh, welcome. We're going to be... We're now watching episodes three and four today. You're going to watch it with us. So really excited. Uh, if you haven't joined us in the previous in the previous episodes, uh, just know we expect you to, to uh, bring peace to the live chat. If anybody comes in here wanting to disturb that peace, just love on them. Just say, we love you. We're here for you. Pray for them. Don't try to shun them down. Um, also, if you see anybody who shares a, a personal uh, story about either despair, brokenness, or loss, if you could just please offer them prayer in the live chat, we'd appreciate it greatly. So here we go. Let's get started. This is episode three, season two. It's called Matthew 424. I'm excited. Oh, it's going to start right off the music. You know what to do, Familia. <laughs> you know what to do. And if you're new and you don't know what to do, follow what everybody else is doing. First, you're dancing at home. Wherever you find yourself, you're dancing. There you go, Esther. We got Melissa Minor out there. Walk on the water. <laughs> Getting clever with those uh, with those emojis. <laughs> Can you get silly with your dancing? Just get silly with it. Give yourself permission. 
There we go. Boom, let's go. Let's do this. Make it happen, Captain. But where would be a good place to start? For you? Yes, for me. The Law of Moses, the Prophecies of Isaiah, the Wisdom of Solomon. Mm. For you, I think Psalms of David. Good start. I'm ready. For example, to the choir master, a Psalm of David. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. And? Just that. Just a few more minutes. Thank you for your patience, guys. Thank you. But I'm not planning on ascending to heaven or making my bed deep in the depths. You asked for a passage. <laughs> yes, but one that could help me understand how you and everyone else knows more. That's what I know and what you must come to believe if you want to make any meaningful study of Torah. I don't understand. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, can you tell me what happened with Jesus? He healed me. Healed you of what? Epilepsy. Yes, and how long have... <laughs> Say it back to me. She does not want to be wasting time talking to him. She wants to enjoy. If I miracle. ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed deep in the depths, you are there. There's nowhere you can go. No height you can climb to in your intellectual mind. No depths Ooh. you can reach in your soul where God is not with you. You get it? I'm oh, sorry. I, I need to so. hear that one more time. This is this is truly special. Sent to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed deep in the depths, you are there. There's nowhere you can go. No height you can climb to in your intellectual mind. No depths you can reach in your soul where God is not with you. You get it? I think so. <laughs> no amount of learning can bring you closer to God. Or make you more or less precious to him. He's always right here, right now. With you. For you. I don't feel it. With the feeling you doesn't always come you. first. Sometimes you have to believe first. Believing a thing does not make it true. Uh, that is wisdom. But these are not just any words. They are David's in scripture. But how do you know whether David was only talking about himself and not everyone else? He did say, if I ascend, not if people ascend. It almost <laughs> sounds like you don't want it to be true. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you please tell me what happened to Jesus? Are you with him? Yes, yes, we are his students. <laughs> he didn't answer the okay? question. <laughs> so with the passage of David, I'm just trying to understand. The trying is the thing. Meditate on it for a few days and come back to me. You're always writing things down. Try writing it down several times. Something about writing it down that goes a long way. That's what I say too. Matthew, I think we've only just begun to know all you can do. Thaddeus, little James, you're up. I've been healed. That's fine. It's getting longer. I'll come back out soon and help you. I won't take my full break. Where is Nathaniel? It's my turn to replace him. That he's staying through, doesn't want to stop his shift. Philip, take my place. See if you can make some headway. He's scary good. Scary good. He's scary there good. There have been over 60 people already with 50 waiting in line currently, not including lepers and others who are still in line. You say over 50 in the line right now? Yes. How long is this going to last? Well, it depends on each encounter you have. Oh, never mind. I get it. <laughs> he was not really wanting the answer to that question, really? Yes. Did you get some ideas from the lab? Yes from the songs of David, the passage to study before we learn more. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed deep in the depths, you are there. Believe me. What? Is that from the firewood from before? Yes. And then when I pushed back the man that was rushing the line, I cut it more on his back. Send me that rag. That same man you speak of bumped into me on his way out after Jesus healed his wife. I believe he's one of the men who arrived here last night. Almost a four-hour walk this morning, and we didn't even have a moment to settle in. I mean, it's great what he's doing, obviously, but I wish 
It would have happened tomorrow. What is happening? What are we a part of? Is it wrong to say I have no idea? No, it makes me feel better. <laughs> but I haven't had time to think about it. All this time, my parents, I just now hate it. Other than that, I figured Thomas and I would get our answers from the rest of you. The word is already spreading so fast. I didn't think about that. Who's... Have you thought about the fame from all of this? I wouldn't mind being famous. <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's not as fun as you might think. I cannot remember a time I did not think about the Messiah at least once a week. My whole life I prayed and prayed that he would come during this time, and I just hoped that I would at least get to see him. But to be close to him like this, and nobody like me, I... <sighs> it's not fun about that? <laughs> you called today fun. Maybe not fun, but good. With this fame comes enemies. You'll be hated too. I'm used to that. Well, you were protected, and your enemies weren't powerful. Speaking of enemies, if someone had told you growing up that you would be a student of the Messiah, you, you would be close to him and you will help him in his mission, what would you have thought? I would have said, sorry, I'm a girl, as my brother. <laughs> Fair enough. But really, Thomas, hmm? what would you have thought? I would have thought... I don't have military training. That's uh, still a problem, actually. Exactly. When I was a child, I used to think how amazing it would be to see Messiah kill all the Romans on my street, and I wanted to help him. I prayed <laughs> every day wow. with a wooden sword. Yes, and I have this scar that proves he was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I used to imagine that the Romans would break into our home, and I would be hiding under the bed with a knife. and just when they came to get me messiah would rescue me at the last moment i didn't think we'd be spending our time healing well watching him heal and they'll never stop the people come the more they hear about it and we're just going to be doing this the next five years and we'll never get to the fighting part eager to bring out that wooden sword of yours are you do you honestly not know what i'm talking about Yes, I haven't had any expectations. It's probably why it's a little easier for me. I can remember as a little girl hearing about how someone would save us someday, but I don't remember much about it. Why is it you expect a warrior? Zechariah. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights on a day of battle. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east. Yes, and yes, yes. The Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, and half of it will move in all this craziness, but we don't even know when this is going to be, if it's even in this lifetime. Here is what I also do not understand. Isn't the Messiah supposed to come at a time when all is holy? I, that's at least what you've been telling me. What is that from? Even a prophetic poem from the rabbis not so long ago. And there shall be no unrighteousness in them on his day. For they shall all be holy. And their king shall be the Lord Messiah. This is why the Pharisees do not think he is the one, Mary. You have to help clean up the Red Quarter first. <laughs> I don't think he's waiting for us to be holy. And I think he's here because we can't be holy without him. They were in... <laughs> wow. That's good. The baptizer will want to use that. They're they're all so perfect. James, one I long shot. Crowd control, people. Any I'm one of them. Getting physical Sorry. And, uh, in case you haven't noticed, this was done in all in one single shot. A long shot. And everyone did a perfect job. If any one of them would have messed up their, their lines, they would have run out of time because the sun's going down and they would have had to done this the following day, I saw um, I saw something about this a while back uh, about them actually um, getting through this one shot. This has been what about ten minutes almost. I can't help much in that department. Yeah, are you serious? Yes. I'm gonna have to use my sword on them before the Romans. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, how are we doing? 
<laughs> well, how oh, do I put this? What, are you serious? I'm more soft than I was. Yes, yes you are. I thought you said you were good at this. I thought I was. <laughs> how do you do this? Yeah. <sighs> So what was everyone talking about? Ah, not much. Just prophecy, our growing fame, the Messiah healing disease instead of overthrowing the Romans. Small topics like that. Well, I'm not sorry I missed it. <laughs> I'm ready for this day to be over. What about out there? Anything happen in your short shift? No, it's the same as all day. One thing that is annoying me, though, is these people, they are believing in him and, and praising him and don't get me wrong that's great but it's because he's healing them the samaritans yeah that's pretty much what he said that's all they needed i know i just don't know how many of them would believe in him if he wasn't healing them well yeah so i have to ask <laughs> i think i can guess i i have two questions Forgive me, but I speak plainly. What is your malady? Forgive me, I, I don't mean to offend. It's, it's fine. It's um, a form of paralysis. It's, it's caused problems since birth. It's almost time for evening meal. Are you hungry? So then why... I mean... Why hasn't he healed you? How do you watch all these healings today? Does it bother you? Why? Fair questions. Yeah, I mean, fair questions, but... Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about all of this. I, I mean, I suppose one big thing is that I haven't asked. Yeah. Why not? I don't know. It wouldn't be right to ask. Just like Simon I didn't ask. Your, uh, struggle and i was watching what was happening today i demanded demanded I I should. he would demand it, it. Just doesn't feel right you know and i suppose I've, I've just been grateful that he called me to follow him in spite of it but there you go it's never come up not even once and i'm just afraid that if i mention it to him it will he can change his mind about me or something oh that's fair <laughs> I'm pretty sure he knows your situation. <laughs> it's not like if you pointed out, he'd be surprised. That's true. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Still one shot. Thank you. We thought you were coming tomorrow. Yeah, well, some friends were uh, able to come with me earlier, so they dropped me off today, and they're seeing some family in the area. You'll be with us for a little while, yes? Do the feast and then you'll see. Oh, Philip, Shalom. What are you doing here? I'm uh, with your son now. Is John all right? Is, I haven't spoken to him in a while. John is fine, but he said the time was now, so here I am trying to make myself useful. Uh -huh. Mary, this is Matthew. He wasn't with us at the wedding. Ah, oh, Shalom, Matthew. Welcome. Oh, look. That's fine clothing. Thank you. Well, what do you do? I don't. I, I He's was... a new student. Uh, Jesus called him. Ah, lovely. Well, I'm sure you're someone special. So, was today a very long day? I saw a lot of people. <laughs> Simon told me to come back here. Do we know when Jesus will be finished? We walked here from Philippi this morning, and he hasn't stopped since then. Mm. He has always been a worker. He gets that from his father. Both of them, I suppose. <laughs> Speaking of work, I see the food. I'm surprised. Like exhausted. I'm here to help. Uh, we'll have it ready very, very soon. I'm surprised they didn't stand around the fire so they can all be well lit. You know, they're running out of light here. And there it is. It, that was the end of that long shot right there. At minute 1620. 16, Not including the intro. It was about, yeah, about 12, 13 minute shot. Beautiful work.
Andrew, I need a mental break. Do one of your meaningless question games. They're not meaningless. They're interesting. And I've got one I've been thinking about lately. What would you do for unlimited money? Or <laughs> what would you give up? You have all the money you could ever want for the rest of your life. Meaning, would I do something painful? Yes, or crazy. Now I realize why I like Andrew so much. One, he speaks my language of sarcasm. <laughs> when he says, oh, pull out the pull out the papyrus. He met a man. <laughs> like, he's my favorite. He's my favorite, right? And um, and then this, the, the just asking random questions to get people to kind of think or to imagine an impossible scenario to get people to kind of go deep and question their their reactions or their responses to certain to certain things i love that <laughs> i love that here uh they're not meaningless they're interesting what would you give up you have all the money you could ever want for the rest of your life meaning would i do something painful yes or crazy would you run through the marketplace with no clothes on screaming <laughs> of course not be killed by a soldier. Plus, it could be immodest. It could be a sin. Fine. Something <laughs> that wasn't a sin. Would you give up your left hand if you would be rich the rest of your life? Maybe not a full hand, but a couple of fingers, sure. What about love? Would you give up ever getting married? I don't know. Simon, is it worth it? Absolutely, but... You'll never be so lucky to find someone like Eden. So... <laughs> Take the money. <laughs> Take the money, he says. I've never had much money my whole life. And I've been happy. I don't expect we'll have much money for as long as we're following him. But you have had some money before, yes? <laughs> Are you happier now or then? Ask Matthew. John. What? That was a bad question? You brought up money. Matthew's had it, we have not. I feel better now. I don't know if that means happy. It's not polite to talk about personal money. Just a question. Mm. I think about it sometimes. And then I feel guilty. For what? For thinking about things I shouldn't wanting things I shouldn't care so much about. Sometimes I feel like I'm living someone else's life. Like I look at myself from the outside. It doesn't always feel like me. Feels like someone who's trying to live up to the heroes of our history. Like I have to do something great. But I know I'm not great. Mm. Know it even more now, being with him. I understand. I feel like I need to not make any more mistakes. What do you think I felt? You must feel that every day, no? Not anymore. He always reassured me, and God always made me feel like I shouldn't be burdened. So how did you feel when that happened? When what happened? His birth. Even before that, how did you know, when did you know who he was? I don't know. We're all tired. Do you really want to hear all that? <laughs> yes. No, yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, well. Nothing about it was easy. I can tell you that. It wasn't in my hometown. My mother wasn't there. We had no midwife. I don't know if I'm ready to give all the details. Another time. But I do remember this when Joseph handed him to me. 
It was like nothing I expected. It was like everything I'd heard about having a baby, but I thought this would be completely different. What do you mean? Like it was going to be made of gold I or something? I had to clean him <laughs> off. He was covered in... Uh, I will be polite. <laughs> he needed to be cleaned. And he was cold. And he was crying. And he needed my help. My help. A teenager from Nazareth. It actually made me think for just one moment. Is this really the son of God? And Joseph later told me he briefly thought the same thing. But we knew he was. I don't know what I expected. But he was crying and he needed me. And I wondered how long that would last. <laughs> He doesn't need me anymore. Not since we taught him how to walk and eat. He hasn't needed me for a long time, I suppose. And after Joseph passed, may he rest in peace. He grew up even quicker. And I wish I could say that made me happy. Of course, as a Jew, I'm excited to see everything he does for our people. And I'm proud of him. But as a mom, it makes me a little sad sometimes. Mm. So it's good to be with all of you for a bit. I can find ways to help. I'll take it. Mm. Imagine that. Simon, when you were just with him, did it seem it would go for very long? It's tough to tell. The line was dying down, but he won't send anyone away anyway, so we'll see. I'll go check on them. The son of God needed her, was vulnerable, was cold. And needed her, a teenager. Wow. I didn't know he lost his father. I lost mine several years ago. I'd have to ask him about that. Has anyone else lost a parent? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Was it recent? No, no. It was when I was a little girl. It's painful. Sorry. Thank you. It was. <laughs> I didn't fully understand it right away. But eventually it made me really angry. And I left when I was young. Left home? Left everything. Everything. I, uh, I tried to stop acting like a Jew. I tried to stop being myself. Mm -hmm. And then later, as some the people from our town, including some of you, knew about. Uh, worse things happened. Most of it is a blur. <clears throat> but I forgot so much of everything I learned as a little girl. But now you can catch up. Yes. I hope. 
with Natty and Reaper. <clears throat> you all are <laughs> so far ahead and you're so good at all of this. <laughs> We're not as good as you think. <laughs> yeah, most of us. But you were the one with your nose in the writing, still are. Eh, a little. Not as good as others. Oh, come on. You can recite half of Torah if you had to. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Still going. I couldn't do any more, but uh, they said they've got it. I really want to be a good student. I don't think any of us went to bed Midrash or did much study after school. What's so surprising about all this? Thomas, did you? No, I was in the family business the day after I graduated. 13 years old and I was preparing and serving food at weddings. I was not a student at all, believe me. Hey, I, I wasn't even good at praying until recently. I would get bored with it. You know, the same thing over and over. And I learned to love it as I got older. I wasn't great at any of it when I was a student. I wasn't either. I didn't like all the rules. I never struggled with it. I do what I'm told. Yes, I'm the same. I've always been a rule follower. I always loved the history, the story, so I always loved the rules, too. Simon? I had my moments. <laughs> <laughs> One time when my parents were asleep, I had meat with cheese just to see what I was missing. Have you ever done that? <laughs> I'd feel too guilty. You feel guilty about everything. Right after you were born, you said sorry to Ima for causing her pain. <laughs> Forget the guilt. I was sick for days. I haven't violated a single food rule since. I tried pork once. How? Oh. Uh, we were traveling and we were in a Gentile marketplace and I just grabbed a piece. Really? Oh, it was marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> One time on the boat, uh, we were approaching a Shabbat sunset. Abba and John had finished their tasks, and I still had to put my fish in the barrels because I had so many. No, it's because you were going too slow, because you're too careful. No, it was because I had so many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to put them away, obviously, before the sun sets, or they'll rot the next day, and you can't clean them during Shabbat, so... I started yelling to the others, hey, come on, help me. No. They just laughed at me and walked home. And I had to work so hard and so fast, I ended up spilling some of the fish back in the water. But I finished just in time. And I was breathing so hard, I vomited on the shore. <laughs> oh. I waited two whole days to clean it up. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I've grown to love being Jewish, and I've grown to love following the law, but it can be exhausting. Following the law or being Jewish? Both. It always has been, even before the occupation. Yes, but aren't we used to it by now? Hasn't it made us stronger? I don't get it, if I'm honest. I don't know why God has allowed the occupation. I'd have to ask him more about that. Here we go. Why this has been allowed for so long. It's hard to feel like the chosen people. I've been there. But it's all worth it now, yes? The wait is over. And suddenly an owl in the background. What about you? What do you mean? Has it been difficult for you all this time? The occupation, following Jewish law. My life has not been easy. Why has he got to shake the cage? It hasn't. What was more painful for you? Escaping Roman persecution by working for them or... Escaping your guilt with all the money. And now you're catching up on Torah and wanting to follow the law. Why now all of a sudden? Why not all the other times you had the chance? Simon? No, no, John, I want to know. 
Mary had horrible trauma. She didn't choose all that happened to her. What's your excuse? What do you want me to say? I, I don't know what you want from me. An apology. What? Simon's not wrong. He could be more delicate about it, but you did choose to work for them. And you made my life even harder than it already was. And you haven't apologized. But so did Simon. Simon kind of worked for no, them no, too. No, don't say it. I don't want you to apologize. It doesn't matter. What would hearing him say sorry do? I won't forgive it anyway. What keeps putting you in authority? Who are you to forgive or not to forgive? What, you're on his side? No, of course not. But you've had your problems too. What about apologizing for what you almost did to us with their omens? I didn't go through with it. I was trying to save my family's life, and I love you, John, but that's not something you have to worry about when Zeb and Salome are looking out for you. But you put me in a desperate position where I did things I would never have done otherwise. And I've repented for them. And John and James, I am sorry, but I didn't go through with it. What is your excuse? I was a successful businessman, and yet I was always behind. He wasn't your tax collector. You quit defending him. I want an answer. Hey, you're Lou. Oh. Do you know what it's like to be Jewish? To suffer for centuries and centuries because of it, but to still commit to it? To protect our heritage even though it never stops being painful? Because the one comfort we have is to know that we're doing it together. That we're all suffering together. But if, if we just wait a little longer, if we hold tight, just a little more, we'll have rescue because we're chosen, all of us. Exactly. And you betrayed that and you spit on it. I can't forgive it. I'll never forgive it. All right. Mm. You said what you needed to say. Sit down, Simon. You sit down first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it comes. The silence, just silence. The selfishness put on, put in the light here. What was she saying about him not need she him not needing her? Oh boy.
Oh boy, oh boy. Um that was something, wasn't it? So many tiny little lessons here. Uh mute this just a little if there's going to be a commercial or something so we can play in the background or i don't think actually let me let me see i'll wait and see but familia um we're going to continue on to episode four here and before we do i just want to kind of recap what happened in the previous excuse me in the previous episode simon while he was right, like Andrew said, he was wrong. I love that that Matthew kept sort of quiet. He could have put him on blast. He could have put his business out and said, "Why are you Why are you accusing me of of doing what's wrong when you actually worked with with the Romans directly?" You know. For, for him, he was trained to do that as a boy. He didn't see, you know, anything wrong with it because he was being trained as a, as a young, as a child in his innocence. So then plus he has this, a different type of thinking than, than Simon does. Simon actually said that he was helping his first, helping his family. And yes, he didn't go through with it, which is great, but it doesn't make it right, right? But I think the most important thing besides that, other than that, set that aside. I think the most important thing here is to not treat people how they were. Right? I think we're seeing that the apostles aren't yet have not yet died to their past and they're not born again. They're not new creatures. They're all still trying to figure it out. And while Matthew spent a lot of time taxing his own people, he's here now. You know, he said, where were you when this was going on? Where were you when this was other, this other thing? You had all these opportunities to do. Why now? It doesn't matter why now. The, what matters is that it is now. He's trying now. He's wanting to, to make up for it now. But Simon holding on to his past pain fails to see that he suffered differently. But just because he was comfortable in, and in clean clothes and at a big house doesn't mean that he was not suffering because he he couldn't leave his home like Simon left his home. He had to hide in a carriage. He had people spit on him, turn away from him. You think that he could go into any shop and buy whatever he it is that he needed from that shop and not be mistreated? Whereas Simon could have walked into any, any shop and bought anything without being ever mistreated. He didn't know that. He had a family. Matthew didn't. He's the exact opposite. And so what I think, I think what happens sometimes is that we're drawn to beating on the people that are the complete opposite, because to a certain degree, we're a little bit jealous of the fact that they have the freedom that we wish we had. I'm not saying that Simon wanted the money or the house, but that for, for he sees that he didn't have his family, that Matthew didn't have his family. So what did he really sacrifice? He didn't sacrifice anything. Whereas Whereas Simon is away from his wife, is away from, from his home, right? He sacrificed something. And so he sees something in Matthew that he wishes he had, but curses him for it, right? So we have to be mindful of other people's suffering and know that before we bring up another person's past, before we treat them like they, like they used to be, let's think about ourselves too, because if somebody brings up your past and treats you like you were, you wouldn't like it. But you're something else now. You're changing. You've, you've changed that. You're no longer that, right? And the true, it's the truth for everybody else. When somebody is trying not to be that past, don't pull them down or don't drag them back to who they were because you can't let go of it. They're trying to let go of it. You can't. Anyway. That's that's the message there. Um, let's uh, let's get started with episode four. If you're loving this so far, hit the like button to let YouTube know that you're enjoying this these conversations. I really pray that more people come, um, whether it's live or or, or not, um, that they see this afterwards, 
so that um, so they, they can hear the conversation and see the chat and what you guys are all saying. I know that Erica is posting up some of your comments on there. So I hope somebody comes back around and sees some of your comments and that it, it, it ignites something inside of them to follow God more seriously. You know, here, here we had the, this, these characters arguing with each other, thinking, you know, you think you have it bad. I have it worse because I had to do this. And, and then, you know, somebody else arguing and we're like, well, no, like he's had it tough too. And we get into these discussions and then Jesus comes along and he's, he's been healing, man. He's been working. He's been putting in the work, not for himself, for others, for others. How can we do that? How can we stop thinking about our own suffering and give to others who are suffering, ease the suffering of others it, that that within itself is rewarding, at least it is to me. I don't know. Can you can you uh, let me know how you feel about this? Is it not rewarding to help somebody else who's suffering? Do you not forget about your own sufferings? Don't you don't you feel like by giving you're receiving something in return? Sometimes it doesn't even take a lot. Some of you have grandparents who you haven't really gone to visit in a really long time. Some of you have aunts and uncles who you haven't seen in a really long time. And all it takes is just one simple little phone call to make that person feel seen and heard, right? So, uh, yeah. I remember someone said that uh, a lot of us want to receive, right? But if you really want to receive, then start giving. Because giving begins the receiving process. And that's... That's absolutely true. Sometimes we don't have much, but we give what little we have, and then suddenly we have more. Um, you know? Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> let's, uh, let's continue. This is episode four, the perfect opportunity, it's called. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I don't remember this. Oh, I remember this now. Oh boy. <sighs> Look at the colors, they're so beautiful.
I was just thinking the exact same thing, Miss Norris. So much. This beautiful storytelling. Look at that beautiful shot. Look at it. Would you look at this? I mean, would you look at this? Look at this. <laughs> uh, sorry, th throw a little humor in there because they're all emotional here. That was awesome. This is brilliant storytelling. Just amazing. Come on, man. You got to work on that upper strength. <laughs> upper body strength. Come on, do some, some push-ups or something. Listen to that. Oh my goodness. That's so beautiful.
My goodness. Beautiful work. Cha 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 cha. Come on, familia. <laughs> you know what to do. Gotta sit up, gotta stretch. Ah. Ah. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for dancing along with me. Oh, big pimpin. I <laughs> because you don't know how to count. I ask you eight and six. That is not acceptable. Lisa. And we have the same problem. I ask you for eight. No, no, you take this back and you bring me eight like I asked. Oh, eight. Fire! Oh, I remember this. No, Lord, but God. You ruined one of my cards. It did get his attention, Rabbi. You're very resourceful, Simon. That's it for today, so let's... Come on, Simon, let's eat. Murder training. Real subtle. Real subtle. I'll be seeing you real soon, Simon. He is as inventive as he is dedicated. I have overseen Simon's training for the last three years. He has never failed me. Now, he has never had an assignment like this before. A Roman magistrate on the streets of Jerusalem. But he will have at least two escorts. Every breath this Roman takes is tap. Every garment he deigns for this so-called high priest, stained. Caiaphas has resisted. His resistance is a show. The Romans, however, do not know that. The magistrate's mysterious death will cast suspicion upon Caiaphas, resulting in his arrest. Simon is up to the task. Send them to me. Sorry, there were a lot of words that I'm not familiar with, so I needed to turn on the, the closed captioning. Yeah, I've never been to Jerusalem. Really? How is that possible? My father never took me and my mother to the feast. This is your first feast of the tabernacle? Uh, no, this is just my first time in Jerusalem. The tabernacle is a temporary dwelling. It's a tent. I know what the tabernacle is. So what? Do we have to build one to eat? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I was being facetious. God said to live in a booth the seven one time. days during this feast. To commemorate how the children of Israel lived in temporary shelters for 40 years in the desert. Still out. One of three pilgrimage holidays where every able-bodied Israelite male would travel to Jerusalem and present himself before Adonai. You really don't know about any of this stuff. I've already admitted that I don't know all of it. I didn't pay much attention. I do recall my father used to leave three times a year. Why is it only the men are required to go? It can be a perilous journey. Difficult for children and the sick, people who need caretakers, but it doesn't prohibit anyone. I've taken Eden many times. Ah! Sharp. All right, I need some bodies to go into town with me. Nathaniel gave me a list of supplies for this masterpiece of his. Mm, pick me. <laughs> pick me. <laughs> pick me. Enter. That looks serious. Please. To whom do you serve? El Shaddai, God of power and might, God of war. What is your name? Simon, son of Zebulon, son of Akiva of Ashkelona. For what were you born? To cleanse Israel of her enemies, to expel all non-Jews from Jerusalem, as the scriptures demand. Which scriptures? From the scroll of Moses, Shemot. Whoever sacrifices to any God other than the Lord alone, shall be devoted to destruction. Well, you will travel to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. With the order? Two days prior. You will leave first thing in the morning. In Jerusalem, you will assassinate an enemy of God. The Roman magistrate, Rufus. You will be met by your brother in the city. M my brother? A Jerusalem zealot and his team. They have been tracking Rufus. Once you are briefed on the Romans' movements, raise the Rufus. You lead the team. Yes, Master. Carry out your orders, Simon of Zebulon, or never return. The Lord is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not. It doesn't matter, any kind of crate or, or ballot. A stone would work. A stone, Yanni. This is a public teaching. I picked this market specifically because it serves so many poor. They're hungry for the words of a teacher. Uh, they're hungry yeah, for they're food, too. They're afraid of you. Afraid of what? It's the holy city. You're a Pharisee. Just relax. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who bestows good things upon the unworthy. The Birkat Hagumel. But that's the blessing for life-threatening situations. <laughs> You'll be fine. This <laughs> is the first step to gaining a following. And once you have, your message will have even greater weight in the temple. For both of us. Good luck. You're leaving? <laughs> good People luck, he says. <laughs> I'm hungry for breakfast. Blessed are you, Lord, our King of the universe, who is good and does. Yeah, let's just rush through it. No big deal. <laughs> Eyes on the prize.
I would have just rolled. <laughs> I would have just gone and rolled into the water. <laughs> Come on, man. Or stay in that. Stay on that one there. Yeah. There you go. Stay there. <laughs> Are you okay, Jesse? Uh huh. Not moving from the edge. There's no point. It was a dumb idea. You're not going to try anymore. No, Jesse. If you don't have any hopes, then why are you still here? Can you believe that guy is here? I saw him earlier. Who is that? That is a ghost of the Cohorte Urbane. Secret police, more like marshals, elite soldier investigators. I heard the captain call him Atticus. Don't stare. Never seen one before. Or you have, and you didn't know. <laughs> right, or he wouldn't be so secret. <laughs> Hello? What brings you to Jerusalem? Uh, the, the festival, the pilgrimage. You're a few days early. I have family here. In what district? Near the Antonia Fortress. Are you carrying weapons? No. You're free to go. No! No! What was his crime? Murder? <laughs> You're not planning on murdering anyone. What is anyone? your name, soldier? Linus Silnius, sir. Linus, I want you to take your next assignment very seriously. My next assignment, sir? The Antonia Fortress is not a residential area. It is a public forum. That man does not have family there. Do you understand? Axius, send Linus Silnius home and take over this checkpoint. Oh, I am so hungry. That's all I can do not to bite into this pomegranate. I was too. But the vendor had a stain on his tunic that looked like a baby spit up. It made me nauseous. I know. I heard you tell him that. <laughs> you shouldn't eat right now. He I told him. Oh, you really boy, don't oh, back, boy. Do you? Just being helpful. You want to impress Rema, right? What? Oh, you heard me. Oh, oh, oh. They have not exposed you me. your iniquity to restore your fortunes, but have seen for you oracles that were false and misleading. I say to you, brothers and sisters, fellow children of Adonai, we must always be on guard against the false prophets among us who use God's words. Not to praise him, not to him, but in the of their own power. It is what are you doing? Seduced. Often. <laughs> this man is so irritating to me. Makes sense. You're kind of the same person. Yeah, yeah. Numbers and logic. Except he can't tell jokes. Guys, <laughs> we should see what he wants. That Pharisee knows us. He does not approve. What do you mean? He used to live in Capernaum. He once yelled at our master. That guy? Shh. He called for his arrest at the house of Big James and John's father. We should go. Where? The meeting place is a block away. What are the odds? <laughs> They're both calculating? They're both actually calculating the odds. <laughs> Look. The Pharisee doesn't know our faces. We see the others, we'll head them off. Tomorrow night begins the Feast of Tabernacles. Over one million Jews are flooding into our city at this very moment from every corner of Israel. All to observe the feast, yes, but some may bring with them an agenda. 
some false teachers may seize upon the large crowds to spread their heresy. You see what I mean, though, about Matthew and you? Please don't speak. Uh oh. He's like the uh, the Matthew of the police, right? He's very observant. And I like that he's almost always eating. <laughs> We've got a map of the whole city. We've got a map of every street he walks, every spot he goes. We tracked his movements for two months. Near the end of every Shabbat, at the start of the first day, Motsi Shabbat, he goes to his favorite restaurant in the upper city, the Valerian. And there are no other patterns, no other places he goes consistently. To the Praetorium every day, of course, but it's heavily guarded on all sides. The restaurant is utterly exposed. He always has a guard, and on the off hours when he is with his wife, too. The Siamarishan tradition is a problem. If the streets are empty for Shabbat, it will be harder to create a diversion. It will be a challenge to get into position as Shabbat is ending. Roman is smart to choose Shabbat. Of course. Never underestimate the enemy. We, we have an ally with a shop on the square. We could store our weapons there and be ready as soon as Shabbat ends. Excellent. I need a cart with dry straw and three additional men. See to it. That looks beautiful. With all due respect to Daniel, I know you're a skilled architect, but this thatched roof will keep the rain out. That's the point. The vegetation provides shade from the sun during the day. And if a few raindrops get through, it is a reminder of our dependence on God, of his provision, mm. and of how our people were so vulnerable in the wilderness. And 
he brought us through. There was a time in my life, in my old life, where I had to sleep outside. It is a good reminder of how I was delivered from that. This time of dwelling in booths is also a leveler of people. <laughs> Wealthy, poor, everyone sleeps outside as equals. Well, let's be honest. Not all booths are created equal. Yes, Nathaniel. The beauty of this booth is itself an act of worship. Rabbi, I have a question. The beauty of this booth is itself an act of worship. The beauty of this booth itself is an act of worship. That that kind of seals the, the post that I put, put this morning about finding your purpose. It's not so much that you are now creating jewelry for God or to serve God or, or whatever it is that you do, providing health care, um, you know, um, serving others at a restaurant, cooking for people, uh, driving people, delivering things. It's not so much that you're doing these things, but that that the, the work that you do itself should be an act of worship, that you're giving thanks through your work, that you are worshiping through your work, that you are in his presence as you're working so that it can touch people, so that whatever it is that you produce, whatever it is that you serve, um, can itself bless other people. Oh, goodness. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay, let's let's continue. Sorry, I needed to, to, to kind of pause. And... and Yeah, never mind. That's it. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Yes. In the prophet Zechariah, it is written, and everyone who has survived of all the nations that have attacked Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Wait, what? Zechariah says that? They read that passage of the feast every year? Do you just... Don't pay attention. And there's a lot of readings. They sort of run together. What exactly is your question, Big James? One day, our enemies will celebrate this feast with us? Babylonians, Assyrians, Romans. the Romans, Jews and Gentiles at this table? What would have to happen for that to be possible? Something will have to change. But the boots won't mean anything to them. We're the ones who dwelt in temporary shelters while we wandered the wilderness, not them. Everyone has wandered through the wilderness at some point. If all the nations came to celebrate in Jerusalem, there will not be enough room, not to buy. I will not bore you with the calculations. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at Philip seeing it. Oh, Jerusalem as we know it now. Now. <laughs> Certainly not. But if Zachariah prophesied it, it will be fulfilled, right? It just sounds impossible. I know a thing or two about prophecies that sound impossible. Anyone have other questions? Hello, friends. Have a seat, please. Hello. Rabbi, uh, we may have a problem. I'm listening. Shmuel is here. Our Shmuel? Yeah. He was on a street corner today, raising the alarm about false prophecy. He means you, Rabbi. Are you sure? Yes, well, he's been. I'm joking. I know he means me, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> so Shmuel is in Jerusalem talking about me. That's even better. Better. I think I'm going to see someone inside the city walls tomorrow. You may come if you like. I enjoy the company. And bring Matthew. It will be good for him. Look at that beautiful building. Over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival 
so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. He's thinking of his brother. On the prophet said, Person you need to see. I love the way the music the just faded out. No, actually the opposite. Bethesda pool. <laughs> really? Here we go again. It's stranger and stranger with you, doesn't it? I love it. <laughs> Why is it strange? Because the history of the pool is pagan. I don't know much about the details. Um, James usually knows that stuff more, but... Um... The pool used to be a shrine for the Phoenician god. Uh, Epin? Ish, Ish, moon. Ish moon. Right, right. And then the Greeks and the Romans turned it into a place of worship for a healing cult of Aesculapius. Very good, Simon. How do you know this stuff? A healing James cult? I'm the only one who reads. John, you should try it. <laughs> I do know about the pools, though. Every day the water steams and bubbles, and some people believe that it's stirred up by an angel who heals the first person who gets to the stirred water. I've read about this, that there are places on Earth where hot vapor steams up from the ground intermittently or makes water boil, and no one knows how. Ah, I wouldn't say no one. Is that why we're going? You're gonna tell us? Someday someone will figure it out and then tell everybody. <laughs> now, <laughs> we have a checkpoint with us. <laughs> Everyone behave yourselves. I love this. They're talking about a myth, and then Matthew brings in facts, like the way it actually works or the way that he heard it works. Could you look any more Roman? <laughs> I'd have asked you to meet me in the town square if I'd known you'd show up looking like a senator. I don't get paid to blend in. I'm Petronius, <laughs> and you are the cohort of Ebony? Atticus Emilius. Atticus Your reputation Lincoln? precedes you. That is why I meet in alleys. <laughs> You're a long way from home. Well, I go where the work is. And what work is here for you, Atticus? Your magistrate. Surprise. Something on Rufus's calendar puts you on a narrow road in the upper city just off the square. Valerian, it's uh, a restaurant. Rufus eats there every Saturday after Sabbath. Oh, lovely. But you've got a skilled assassin that wants to cancel his reservation. <laughs> Did no one ever teach you to mix up the routine? He's inflexible about it. Good. That's good, that's good. Don't deviate. Do everything exactly as you'd planned. What? No, I can't risk his life. Go arrest the assassin. Do you know who the zealots are? They're extremists. They reject the They're martyrs with a persecution complex. Arrest him, we'll only be adding fuel. Mm. Torture him, 
he gets a seat closer to his god. No. I want to kill him, Petronius, in the act. And then I want to watch his rat pals scurry their way back to their nest with a story they can't glorify, can't teach to the next class of mocks. And do you know why? Oh, man. Why? Because we were just better than they were. That's why. Rome won. <sighs> it's a game. That's you the game. Be a general. Now, what fun would that be? Well, you're going to have to lay out your plan to the magistrate and his wife. She'll go for it before he does. Tendinari says she doesn't. I don't need the money. So if he's not doing it for the money, what's he doing it for? Look at that beautiful structure. Oh. Jesse? Someone's speaking Spanish. Sorry. I'm your brother, Simon. I heard somebody speaking Spanish in the background. Jesse? After he says Jesse, I think he says, Ya con eso se quedó. Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody was speaking Spanish. I'm your brother, Simon. Do you remember me? Simon? <laughs> your heavy brother. They told me I could find you here. Uncle Ram at Abbas funeral. <laughs> you must be 30 years old. You're not Simon. I'm almost 40. I've been here 25 years. Oh, man. You make the pilgrimage every holiday. Yes. And you knew I was here. Our order forbids coming to the Bullet Batista. I'm your brother. This place is a pagan cult. Since when do cults bother you? I was embarrassed for you. Do you really believe in this? You try living for 38 years with that like that work. And then tell me you wouldn't try anything and everything. Why wouldn't you at least come by once and carry me into the water? You could have tried. It is not in our God's nature to play sick people against each other in a twisted game. I won't play it with you. Is it in our God's nature that his children would slit each other's throats? <laughs> in our God for the commandment that we shall not take another's life. And I, we both know the scriptures. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. The land must be purged. And what about our family? Hmm? Are we to be purged too? You left me. Oh. You left all of us. I left you to save you. Do I look saved to you? <laughs> oh, man. You are worse than you used to be. My legs are the same as when you left. I'm not talking about your legs. I'm talking about you. Oh, man. This godforsaken place has turned my strong brother into someone hopeless. And what should I hope in? After all these years? You and your murderous kind. Jesse, it's killed me to watch you suffer in your life. And I am sorry. I truly am. But that's not the only kind of pain. And you're not the only one who feels it. But you know what? I am at least doing something about mine. And I'm not sitting in a bed waiting to die. Have you said all you need to say? Mm. I have to be in the upper city. Oh, that's nearby. That's still a mile away. Might as well be a thousand miles to me. Ouch. Whoever it is, don't do it. 
It's not worth it. If they catch you, they'll kill you. I am not afraid of death. I just wanted to say goodbye because I didn't do it right the first time. Oh my goodness. I do love you. And I love God. Goodbye, Jesse. By the time you read this, I will be halfway to the mountains to join the zealots of the fourth philosophy in the spirit of our great King David, who sang, Zeal for your house has consumed me. I know it. I was a better writer then. And from Zephaniah, behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors. I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. Oh, man. Jesse. When you stand on two feet, I will know the Messiah has come. I will fight for the freedom of Zion in order to see that day. I stand by it. Well, your brother can't stand. <laughs> Oh man, how heartbreaking is that? Abandoned twice by the same person. Here we go. You don't have much time. Hey. Hey. What's the matter? Nothing. Our men are in position. When you see Rufus and his escorts pass the side street entrance, eh? Side street entrance. You'll have 30 seconds to get into position. fuss is about an oversized mikve i have a feeling we haven't seen it all yet that's him oh him the one who's been here the longest what doesn't belong. A sad one. Well, why do I get the feeling this isn't just a meeting? Do we need to be on the lookout? No. Just stay with me and watch. Stay with me and watch. Shalom. Me. Yes. Shalom. I have a question for you. For me. <laughs> I don't have many answers, but I'm listening. Do you want to be healed? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? 
We'll get to that later. But my question remains. Will you take me to the water? <laughs> Look, I'm having a really bad day. <laughs> I've been having a bad day for a long time. Oh my goodness. Again, ya con este se quedó. So? Sir, I have no one to help me into the water when it's stirred up. And when I do get close, the others step down in front of me. Oh, goodness, man. So, oh. Look at me. Look at me. Look at him. <laughs> That's not what I asked. I'm not asking you about who's helping you or who's not helping. Ooh. Or who's getting in your way. Message. I'm asking about you. <laughs> I've tried. For a long time, I know. You don't want false hope again, I understand. But this pool, it has nothing for you. It means nothing. And you know it. But you're still here. Why? I don't know. You don't need this pool. You only need me. <laughs> so, do you want to be healed? So let's go. Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Oh, you better run. <laughs> I'm free to walk, like he said. Don't forget your bed. Why does this matter? Because you're not coming back here. That life is over. Everything changes now. That life is over. Everything changes oh, now. It's Shabbat. What are you doing? Torah forbids carrying a mat on Shabbat. Not Torah, the oral tradition. Yes. Transporting objects from one domain to another violates Shabbat. The man who healed Do you me. Do not realize what just happened here? Why are you trying to make this about Shabbat? He said to me, take up your bed and walk. <laughs> who did? Who told you that? He did. I don't know. He didn't tell me his name. No. Of course not. He performs a magic trick and tells you to commit a sin. A false prophet. This will be reported. You report whatever you want. <laughs> I'm what? standing on two legs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I need to go find my brother. It's like, report whatever you want. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's my first time. I'm getting <laughs> to the upper city. <laughs> Ew. 
You look radiant tonight, darling. Don't push it. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Oh. Beautiful. Me. They have no well, idea. Pharisees were pretty upset. No idea. That was almost as much fun to watch as the miracle. This week should be fun, huh? I do have a question, Rabbi. Yes, Matthew? Waiting 30 more minutes wouldn't have mattered to that man. Why did you do this on Shabbat? Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. <laughs> Risking so much, risking so much just to be able to save a few people, right? So no one died today. Um, his brother was saved. And, and it was brilliantly put together. It's like a, like I mentioned to you all yesterday. Um, sorry, like I mentioned to you all yesterday that I think it was yesterday that God puts in place little things that will much later meet and come together, right? Sometimes we don't understand why certain things happen. We don't like it because it happened to us. We're in pain. But that little boy falling off that tree started it all, right? It started it all. Yes, um, 
Jack the fly. Like one little thing, chain reaction, right? Uh, Simon Z reminded me of, of a Mexican story, Emiliano Zapata, who, who saw that his dad was being taken advantage by the government and he vowed to, to protect and to gain the lands back that they had stolen from his father. And so that's that's very powerful when you see that your parents are suffering in one way, you make it your life's mission, your life's goal to make sure that 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 either those people never hurt anyone ever again or that that right that wrong has been righted. But the words that he said to his brother about, you know, the day that he sees him walk, he'll know that the Messiah is back. And in that moment, you know, God, like Christ couldn't have waited. He had to have done it. He had to do. He had to do it there, like thirty minutes before. It's just so beautiful. Like all of this has been just a beautiful puzzle piece that's been placed together by by the beautiful team um, of the chosen. But I, I love this. I absolutely love this. Like it, it reminded me of a story that I heard just a few few days ago. I'll just tell you this quick story and then I'll leave. But there's a story of this of this uh, man who was a banker who uh, couldn't walk. Um, or his dad, some, something, someone couldn't walk. But it just so happens that he was chopping wood when his dad told him not to do it, and he ended up cutting his leg. And so because he ended up gashing his knee, he had to spend his life, his early youth, in a, in a wheelchair and uh, not able to help his family with their farm business. But he started studying accounting, and then he learned he learned about uh, about money and managing managing it. He saved up some money and they wouldn't let him into the university that he wanted to study in because he didn't have enough money for all of the semesters for the, like, I think it was like two years. He only had enough for like six months. So he said, hey, listen, why don't we do this? Just let me pay you this and I'll learn as much as I can until the money runs out and then you can just kick me out. Well, in those six months, he learned everything that he could could have learned in those two years and he ended up finishing school much later he he owned the bank and it was something that he would have never have done for his family had he never cut his knee he would have he would have been a farmer and his family wouldn't have of ever seen the success that he he attained because of that moment that he gashed his knee so let's not count the things that the bad things that happen to us as misfortunes, that's something bad. We never know why. We never know why God does these things, why he takes certain people away, why he takes certain abilities away, why he takes certain jobs away. Something, if you just have a little bit of faith, just the tiniest bit of faith and a lot of patience, God will provide, God will come around, God will heal, God will provide, God will save. Always, always, always without fail. So don't count your, the, the bad things um, in your, you know, and on your list of, of bad things that happen to you, I guess you say, you know, it sounds strange to say, but be grateful for some of those things because that thing could have kept you from something else. Like sometimes we're sitting here, we can't find our keys. And I, I always tell my mom, like, look, like, like you never know why you lost your keys and why you're late to work. Like that could have been that one little thing that God, hid from you that, that the keys uh hid from you to prevent you from getting into an accident you know like you never know that accident that i had that you all saw in the stories a few days ago you know it, it was strange i was leaving the house and i told my nephew that i needed a car seat for him he said he said no 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 my, my mom and dad never put a car seat on so i said no but just in case because i don't want to get into an accident and then have you not have the booster seat and not be w well protected and then we got into an accident now, yes, a lot of things ran through my head. Did I, did, I, did I cause that by saying it? Did I ask for that, right? And so I received. Maybe, maybe not. What would have happened if I would have put him in that car, it, put him in the seat without a car seat? Um, would he have gotten hurt, right? Or would I have not taken that extra minute to look for it? Uh, would I've prevented that accident and I would still have that car? I don't know. I don't really know the answers to that. Why even the guy pulled out of his little spot in the time that he did, had he pulled in, pulled out just a little bit before or faster, that ca my car would have flipped over. I don't understand any of that. The only thing that I understand is that no one was hurt and I'm grateful for it. Till this day, I haven't been able to buy another car, but I'm grateful that we all walked out 
of their un, unharmed. And only God knows why he did that. Or God knows why he maybe caused that car to come out. I don't know. All I know is that I'm grateful. But anyway, family, thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate you all sharing this this time and sharing the space with us. Thank you to all of you who are new who um, in the live chat, who um, kept the live chat peaceful. I appreciate it so, so much. And uh, before we leave, I would just like to thank you, Father. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to get together. And again, learning so much from what from what Dallas Jenkins and the team has done to show us the heart of Christ and the heart of Jesus and to bring us into this, these stories in depth to, so that we can learn these powerful messages that are, are helping us, Father, helping us get through uh, difficult moments, helping us get through difficult situations, helping us understand deeper, deeper, understand our situations deeper understanding our problems deeper understanding that you only you can heal us only you through your mercy through your grace can heal us if we only come closer to you god please stay close to us stay as close to us keep your light on us keep the dark away from us i ask and i i pray father that you heal anyone who needs healing in in the live chat now um, and anyone else who's suffering in the same way that they are suffering. So I don't just only ask you to heal the people that are here, but anyone else who may be suffering in the same way that they are, are suffering. Father, I don't ask you only to heal and to, to get my family out of the situation, but to help anyone else who might be in that in the same situation, Father. I pray for everyone suffering in the, that might be suffering in the exact same way. Father, keep us in your light. Keep us close to you. Keep your healing heart. Keep keep your peaceful spirit. Keep keep your healing spirit nearby as we move forward in into the rest of this week. Family, I thank you all so much for joining us. I will see you again tomorrow. To continue this beautiful episode, please join us on Discord for anyone who might need further prayer. Uh, I, I want to say thank you to all of you who who did super chats and who became members. Uh, your your love and support is greatly appreciated. Um, I, I I pray that the Father continues to bless you with more and more and more and multiplies your your donations, not just to to this channel but to Angel Studios, to the Chosen. And, and the donations that you make to one another when you help the poor as you go to work, as you go about your business, you find someone who's in need. When you help that person, may God continue to bless you and multiply your, your blessings on others tenfold. In your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Familia, thank you all so much for joining me. I will see you mañana.